It's interesting. This idea of the Big Bang creating the universe, that's what Einstein's theory says. That's textbook cosmology, if you like. But the current textbook picture is that there was a phase in the universe's life before the Big Bang if you define the Big Bang as the hot, dense phase from which the universe appeared to sort of burst 13.8 billion years ago. That phase is called inflation. What we think happened is that before that, the universe was accelerating exponentially fast. It means it was doubling and doubling and doubling in size. And the numbers are ridiculous. We think that if you started with a universe that was smaller than a single atom, then it would be bigger by a long way than the whole observable universe, 350 billion galaxies in it in less than a million 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 millionths of a second. So, a very rapid, exponentially fast expansion. When that stopped, all the energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space. It heated it up, produced the particles of matter out of which we are made, and all the things that we see out there in the sky. And that's what we see as the Big Bang. So that sounds fanciful, but that's standard cosmology at the moment. The big question then is, well, what started the inflation? What stops the inflation? How long did the inflation go on for? The answer to that is we're not sure. We don't know. In the beginning, there was an infinitely dense, tiny ball of matter that started to expand and would eventually give rise to the atoms, molecules, stars, and galaxies we see today. But what was there before the Big Bang? What was the state of the universe before? Well, everything. The universe underwent a breathtaking cosmic expansion, doubling in size at least 80 times in the fraction of a second. This rapid inflation, fueled by a mysterious form of energy that permeated empty space itself, left the universe desolate and cold. Only after that did the hot, dense conditions of the Big Bang emerge. Some of those theories suggest that inflation doesn't stop all at once. It stops in patches. Every time it stops, you get a universe. Some of these theories, called eternal inflation theories, suggest that there might not be just our universe, the bit that we can see, but that there might be many universes, perhaps an infinite number of them, and they may be produced all the time. So what to make of that? That's where current modern cosmology is. If cosmic inflation correctly describes what happened before the Big Bang, it may push the ultimate answer to the question of where we came from beyond the reach of science. But that just pushes the question further because we don't know anything about what came before inflation, and it's doubtful that we'll ever know. There are theories now that suggest, as I mentioned, that there may be more than one universe and potentially an infinite number. It's a mind-boggling idea, isn't it? Now, I should say one extra thing. If that's true, then some of those theories say that what we call the constants of nature, things like the strength of gravity, the speed of light, and the masses of the particles, can vary from universe to universe. Then you ask the question, well, why is our universe so perfect for life? Why do stars make carbon and oxygen, the elements that you need for life? Why is everything so beautifully balanced so that living things can exist? The answer in these cases is because every universe exists. Every possible combination of the laws of nature exists in different universes. So the reason we see a universe that allows us to exist is obvious. We could ask the question, well, how likely is that? The answer, given that there are an infinite number of them, is that it's inevitable because there are every possible kind of universe. And I stress that this is very speculative stuff, but the first thing I said about inflation, the idea there's this exponentially fast expansion before the Big Bang. If you want to use that language, that's not speculative. That's mainstream cosmology. But this idea that that may lead to multiple universes is more speculative. Still, it's scientifically valid, and there are people who do research into that. Again, this is an active area of research. Inflation tells us that the period of time before the Big Bang was extremely cold and empty of everything but empty space, and that empty space carried energy that stretched the universe out to this enormous size and into the initial state before the Big Bang. However, there are also alternate theories to cosmological inflation that tell us what caused the initial conditions that would eventually give rise to the Big Bang. There's a theory that there may be extra dimensions in the universe. So imagine that we're just living on a sheet of paper, let's say. Then there are theories where our universe is floating around, and there can be another universe floating around, too. So there are more spatial dimensions, and we're just on a sheet floating around in this bigger multiverse. Then you can ask the question. What happens when they collide together? 
One of the theories about what caused the Big Bang is that, actually, what it was was two of these sheets, or brains, as they are called, colliding together and separating. When they collide, they heat themselves up, and you get something that looks like a Big Bang on that sheet of space and time, if you like. So that's another different theory for what happened before the Big Bang. Brains colliding into each other, giving rise to Big Bangs. Multiverse theories might seem extremely speculative and out of touch with reality, but they do, in fact, have mathematical reasoning behind them. Moreover, theories describing the very early state of the universe do have experimental support. The wonderful thing is that we're making measurements now. I should say that the experimental basis for all this is something called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, CMB. We can look up into the sky and see the oldest light in the universe. It was released 380,000 years after the Big Bang. It's when the universe cooled down sufficiently for atoms to form. At that point, the universe became transparent, and that light has been traveling through the universe ever since. We have a satellite up at the moment called Planck, a European satellite that's been taking detailed pictures of this light. In that light, it's like a baby picture of the universe, a scan, a baby scan of the universe in a sense. So you can look at the universe as it was in its very earliest days and see different structures and different properties of that light, and they give you clues as to what happened right back at the beginning of time, at the beginning of the universe. That's where these theories are getting their experimental support. The twin pillars of modern physics are Einstein's general relativity and quantum theory. To understand how the Big Bang emerged and what came before it, it is essential to unite Einstein's theory with quantum theory. Only if we obtain such a theory will we be able to answer the ultimate questions in cosmology, like, what is space? What is time? What is the universe? And where did it come from? The most distant objects in the universe are 47 billion light years away, making the size of the observable universe 94 billion light years across. If you are wondering how can the observable universe be larger than the time it takes light to travel over the age of the universe, the answer is because the universe has been expanding during this time. This causes very distant objects to be further away from us than their light travel time. Most scientists think the entirety of the universe extends way beyond the observable universe, but is there anything beyond the entirety of the universe? Is there anything beyond the universe? Probably not. We suspect quite strongly that our universe could well be infinite in extent even now. A bit of the universe, if you just take our universe, certainly exists far beyond the bit we can see. So why would I say that? If you think about it, our universe has been around for 13.8 billion years. That means that light has only had 13.8 billion years to travel from the bit that we can see to our eye. We can only see as far as light has had time to travel, but we think there's a lot beyond that because of measurements we've made of how the universe is curved and what the structure of the universe is. So it undoubtedly extends beyond the little bubble that we can see. How far it extends is another great question we don't know, but it could be infinite in extent. Taking into consideration the latest discoveries and measurements in physics, we have attempted to answer the questions. What was there before the Big Bang? How big is our observable universe? And what lies beyond the bit we can see? But are we forgetting something? An important question that naturally arises after we question the beginning of everything. How will the universe end? The current best guess or best estimate is that it will carry on expanding forever. The reason I say that is because, actually, the universe is accelerating in its expansion, which is a great mystery. Before that discovery, we thought, well, gravity is always attractive, and so it should be. We've got all these galaxies in the universe, and the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, so it should at least be slowing down. There's even a question as to whether there's enough matter in it to slow it down so much that it stops and recollapses again. But this new discovery, that the universe is accelerating in its expansion, suggests that it will continue to accelerate unless some new physics appears that we don't understand. And so it will just continue to expand forever. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this.